we obviously have to have uh, some more serious regulations of gun control, uh, and we also need to look at our military industrial complex and really take a serious look at this as a, as a problem. And, and I think the vast majority of Americans, you know, are already frustrated with Afghanistan, Afghanistan and Iraq and what's happened, um, you know, with the terrorist groups in, in Yemen and in Syria. We don't want more war. Mm -hmm. And yet it does seem like we're seeing signs of the, of the drums for war being beaten again. First of all, the gun control issue and then the military industrial complex and the drums for war. Uh, Sam, what are, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, where to even begin? I know you said to start with gun control, but it, it's not even that. You know from Ohio that in these rural and western states, guns are about as much a part of life as, you know, cookouts, dinner, you know, Sunday at the church. You know, it, guns are part of life here. Um, everybody that I work with has some sort of firearm. They either concealed carry or open carry at the workplace. I myself own a firearm and I have a concealed carry. In fact, the uh, last month I qualified with the M4 carbine. Um, for me, a weapon is just that tool. It's no different than, you know, this calculator or, or, or this cable to do my job with, you know, it's a tool. So with the discussion of gun control specifically, we need to start talking about control, the actual well-regulated part of it. The weapon is irrelevant. You can have a bazooka. I mean, you yeah. could have a caliber turret-mounted Humvee in your garage, and it wouldn't do a damn thing to nobody. Why? Because it's a tool. Until somebody gets behind it, loads it with ammunition, points it at something, and pulls that trigger, it is an inert, manufactured piece of equipment. The problem is the intent. People lack empathy in, in any sort of, let's see what I want to look for here. They do not value human life. And what we see is that the violence and the apathy is being directed at uh, minority communities. Uh, I'm assuming in California, it's, it's deliberately directed against the Hispanic, especially the Mexican community. And I don't say that to be negative. I'm just saying that because it, it's probably the case, correct? Rodolfo? Uh, yeah, oftentimes, right. yes. Mm -hmm. And you go to New York City, and it's the Islamic community and the black community. You go to Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati, or Cleveland, again, it's the black and the Islamic community. And it's disgusting, because who are the people who are, in fact, shooting up schools? People with this skin color right here. Yeah, that's it's right. white men, young white men who have so much privilege, have every single opportunity in this country by default. They won the genetic lottery as far as the United States is concerned, and they're still the ones shooting up schools because... Why? I have no idea. I, I honestly have no idea what possesses these individuals to do that. But you know what does play a part? Warmongering. The sensationalization of having a firearm. This um, grand aggrandizement of what warfare is, of combat, being the good guy with the gun, of fighting the enemy. A lot of our homegrown terrorists, these men who have shot up schools, churches, yeah. shopping malls, concerts, they think they are doing the right thing. Thing. Yes, they indeed. They because they are being radicalized by Fox News, by Republican conservative talking points. You have actual card carrying, swastika wearing, armband toting, hail Hitler saluting Nazis. Like, not neo Nazis. People who actually say they are Nazis. Yeah. Running for off unopposed on the Republican ticket. Okay? Yes. That is a problem. The KKK is, is surging in popularity, support, and numbers. The Aryan Brotherhood marched on American soil in broad daylight. I mean, yeah. I don't, when, when, and then you have people, normal Americans, defending free speech, defend, saying that hate speech and, and the right for the KKK and Nazis organized is protected. No, it's not. Uh, let me be emphatically clear, and it, and it ties into the Second Amendment and the warmongering. When you have people beating the drums of war who themselves were cowards and didn't fight in wars and yeah. are now sending other volunteers to go fight those wars, when you have people calling other nations terrorist organizations, uh, nation states that, that breed terrorism, and then 
completely dehumanize that country down to one individual, Assad in this case for Syria, or whatever uh, Islamic uh, ISIS terrorist leader, uh, and wherever they might be, um, you, you make it so that people can disassociate with the horrors that are actually being committed. I have friends in Israel, in the Middle East, who have to question whether or not they're gonna see their mother, their father, their eight year old little brother, cousin, nephew, son, child, again. That, that, that might be the last time they ever see them. Yeah. Because these people are being slaughtered by us, by the French and, and, and English soldiers and all the allies that are over in the Middle East, right? So you add to that uh, easy access to weapons, sensationalization of what owning a weapon is, sensationalizing warfare, encouraging citizens to enlist into the United States Air Force and other branches so that they can survive, so they can get an education, so they can get health care, by creating a normal civil society that is so destitute to the common citizen that they have to choose sacrificing their own livelihoods and freedom just to live a normal life. All of that compounds to the current state of dystopian affairs that we have. I mean, people want to say, oh, it's not that bad. This is Nazi Germany pre-World War II. Oh, absolutely. No I say that as a German immigrant. I say that as someone who is dating a genocide survivor from Israel, whose grandfather from Germany was in Auschwitz, who was beaten, tortured, and watched his family be murdered before his very eyes. He had siblings that he could have otherwise grown up with who are dead. Yeah. who are buried, who are nothing but ash and bone somewhere in Germany, Yeah, telling me, telling us, telling the world that the United States of America and the actions that are, are being prominent throughout the world right now are exactly the same exact things that happened prior to World War II, the rise of Nazism.